So how are you Kat? I'm good, I'm so happy to be here. So you're here for the launch of Kat Von D Beauty finally, yeah, finally. after eight years. Are you as excited as we are? Oh my god, I'm so excited to finally be launching here. It's, um, it's exciting, uh, it's kind of a relief, you know, but I think more than anything I've just been looking forward to the meet and greet coming up. The makeup is cool and everything, but I kind of like to use that as an excuse to get here and meet my fans, so yeah. So we wanted to have a chat about your most memorable beauty moments okay. growing up. I remember the first lipstick I bought was 99 cents. Because uh, all I could afford at the time, but um, it was this really cheap, like makeup brand that made uh, this one really dark lipstick. It was um, like I think the, the shade was called Black Orchid, and it was like a really deep, deep burgundy. Because it was so cheap, it was so waxy, so it wasn't like pigmented at all. So I put it on. I'm like, oh, this is like putting on like a berry lip gloss. My sister and I figured out that if we put a lighter to it, it would bring like the pigment forward and we would kind of burn our lips trying to get like a dark lipstick on, so. <laughs> That's yeah. an impressive doing makeup hacks back yeah. then. Yeah, we were like scientists. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first love, honestly, was liquid eyeliner. It's actually a really gross story, but I don't care, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> we were at a park, like at a public park, and they had like the restrooms, and I went to the restroom and I remember some somebody had forgotten their brown liquid eyeliner at, the, at a, the sink. And I just remember going like, all right, I'm gonna take this. <laughs> but as a kid, I was just like, what if, I wanna, I don't know. Something told me like, you already know how to use this, just use it, and I just did. I, I put some like, just like swiped a little bit on my eye. And I remember the feeling of like, whoa, like it just changed everything. And it was weird, I, it's not like I wore it to school. I would just, at the time, I remember I was reading that book, Interview with a Vampire, Anne Rice, because uh, I was, fucking weird kid. And so I would like put on eyeliner and then go like read my book and then if my mom was coming I would just like take it off. <laughs> Makeup has always been such an intimate thing even though like people see it and they think you know there's this misconception that oh you're doing it because you're insecure and you want like other people to think you're something you're not. But it's like no I actually I like to wear makeup because I like it. I, I like the uh, the ritual of like applying it and I love just wearing it you know I think it's um, it's it's a selfish act, it has nothing to do with others. Oh my god, no, I mean, my, my parents, I was like raised like in a super like disciplinary, strict, very conservative, I mean, my parents, you know, they, they didn't have sex until they were married, that kind of thing, you know, so like, w I, didn't, I wasn't allowed to go to like slumber parties or anything, and we just, uh, we had to practice piano every day and, to, you know, do our homework, which is great. In hindsight, I'm glad that that was my upbringing, you know? I was 14 when I started tattooing, and that's when I left school at the same time. So, in the States, that's like the first year of high school. And then uh, and then when I started tattooing, I just, I realized, like, this is my calling. Like, I need to do this. And um, not that I advocate dropping out of school for anybody, because I think school is good for, for a lot of people. Um, but for me, I think it was more like I understood time as something that I didn't want to waste or invest into something I knew I wasn't gonna do. And it's interesting because I think a lot of people assume that I was like a rebellious kid, but I actually wasn't. I love my parents and um, and, and respect them deeply, so it, it kind of pained me to see my my parents uh, struggle with that, you know? Like, it was always really important for my dad to get, like, my high school, you know, diploma or whatever. Even after I was, like, well successful in the tattooing and even supporting the family for a long time, too, and he was still was like, you're still a dropout. When we first launched the line, um, we thought it would be a great idea to come out with the, the four most perfect shades of red lipstick because I, I wore red lipstick every day. I mean, I still do. I mean, I, I do alternate it now, but at the time I was wearing red lipstick like at six in the morning. I didn't care. You know, I don't care what season it is. Red lipstick all day long. Underage red was like this fire engine, like neon red. And, and then there was like your classic crimson red, which was hellbent. And then Misfit was a, a, a rum. Um, like a deep rum red, and then Lolita was a dusty rose. Yeah. So to do four, I was like, oh my god, this is so much. And now, like fast forward to now, I'm just like, uh, we have like ten different shades of reds, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> maybe more. My, my mom, uh, my mom is beautiful, um, and she she was extremely beautiful with and without makeup. But she she did wear makeup, and I remember she would dye her hair, and um, she was into beauty, but not like I I, don't, I would have to show you pictures because. She wasn't like um, like overdoing it. I, like, she just had a, a way, like a very feminine essence to her. Uh, eyeliner has always been eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> My first perfume that I ever got was when I was uh, like 17 or so. From this boyfriend had got it for me, and it was uh, Versace Red Jeans. But every time I smell that, obviously it's kind of reminiscent of, of that time. Even though that, that relationship was shit, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I still, at least I got a good perfume out of it. <laughs> it's interesting because I have like pictures of myself 
you know, from my teenage years when I was, you know, I had a mohawk and everything, and uh, my makeup was really, honestly, not much has changed aside from my eyebrows. I think I, I, I learned how to do my eyebrows <laughs> probably in the last, like, two years. You know, they were just, like, way too long or just, I over-tweezed them a lot back then. But other than that, I always had cat eye eyeliner, red lipstick, and you know, kind of a pale face, so yeah. You know, people have like their, their like embarrassing picture of themselves that they could put on their fridge. I, I have like, like a picture of myself that people are like, oh, who's that cool chick? I'm like, that, that was me. <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> I can't say that there's one like defining proud moment with Kat Von D Beauty. I think that it happens a lot. For studded kiss lipstick, for example, like, here, I'll, I'll, bust, I'll bust one out. This guy here, um, when, when I was first designing it, uh, well, the idea for this came because I was wearing this black studded bracelet and we were, we were thinking like, I want to do like a lipstick tube that's interesting and new and something that I can draw, you know? And so we got the idea to replicate some, or you know, to be inspired by this bracelet. I remember the first time I got to hold this in my hand, it was, I just was so proud that like, wow, you know, this is what dreams are. Like dreams coming true is like having an idea and then translating that into paper and then making that into something we can hold. And, and it felt so good, you know? So I think like that kind of stuff like makes me really proud. Sometimes I have ideas that are risky and it, it requires me like a lot of convincing to my team because I do have a team, you know, like my creative team, I respect so much like their feedback and my, my formulation team that, you know, helps me with development of formulas and stuff. So uh, I do a lot of pushback and I think for them it's lot, like, you know, some of my ideas are kind of out there and they're like, wait, you want to do an all neon palette? Like, I'm like, yes, you know, like, that was when we did the Mid Vita Loca palette, and it was like, I mean, I probably begged to do that palette for like a year before we actually went into production, and then when it did, it was a hit. Sometimes, you know, my team will say, hey, like, we strongly urge you to, like, consider doing this or do, doing that, and it's like, well, I just don't, I don't feel it, you know, and I think, yeah, sure, there's a bunch of money to be made in that sense, but I think if it's, if it's not true to the heart, like, it would be a much greater risk to be able to say, okay, well, Let's gamble and like throw out this product that I don't really believe in and hopefully it sticks. I just can't do it. So so I guess maybe I kind of tend to play it safe in the sense by not following the trends and doing what like my heart says or what, what I'm truly inspired by. You know? Oh my gosh, she, she would feels. be so confused. Because <laughs> at 14 years old, I mean, you have to understand, um, like I'm 34 years old, so when I was 14, you know, there was obviously no television shows like based on tattooing. This was something that you, you weren't like, Having a mohawk, like going to the mall, you weren't treated the same as a lot of people. Like, I mean, going to school, like, was, you know, nothing but getting made fun of. The idea that um, people have taken an interest in anything that I like or, you know, consider me in any way, like, cool is like, it's still so strange to me. I've experienced, like, a kind of like a, a lifetime of criticism. And now it's it's pretty awesome that we're in we're in a place in time where people are so much more open-minded to that. You know, like if I would have launched um, a, a black lipstick back when I was 14, I got I would have gotten laughed at. You know, the 14-year-old me would probably say fuck yeah and give me a high five. <laughs> <laughs>